Look at all these oysters, y'all. The world is my oyster today. All right, guys, I got one for you today. I'm out in my little boat, and I got Mike D, Jetty Rocks fishing with me. It's two big dudes in a little tiny boat, but going to get some salt run oysters. You guys, if you've been following me for a long time, you know I like to go get my own oysters and eat them. But in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to go out and harvest your own oysters in the state of Florida. <laughs> Two big dudes in a little <laughs> tiny boat. It's a glorified John boat. First, I'm gonna go over a little bit of gear with you guys, what you need to come out here and do this. Mike's already on his way to filling up his bucket, but you need a culling iron. This is a really nice one Harold made me. <clears throat> it's got a little mark in it. So that's three inches. The oysters need to be three inches total, but it's pretty easy just to gauge it with your eyes. This is another example of a culling iron, but you can also just use a hammer. Mike uses an old claw hammer that he's had for 20 years. Works great. A pair of gloves. Uh, they will tear the mess out of your hands if you don't have gloves. I've got some brand new white ones, so I look like I look like a first timer today, but I promise you I'm not. We're gonna get out here onto these oyster reefs and start picking out oysters. Another key piece of equipment, some nice rubber boots. You see Mike with those uh, Salerno slippers, Mayport Nikes. <laughs> Mayport Nikes. What, what, do they, what do they call them in New Smyrna Beach? Fish boots. Well, they need they need a fancy <laughs> fancy term. You see these oyster reefs. Now we are here on what's a negative tide, so a little bit lower than normal. These oysters are normally under the water. What we're doing is picking out oysters. I like to get them down towards the water's edge. We actually have a full hour until the actual low tide. You're allowed to have, I think, four total buckets, a bushel per boat or something like that. I think two buckets is a bushel. You're allowed a bushel per person. I'm not gonna take all of that today. I think I'm just gonna get some really nice select oysters for dinner tonight. Now, all these oysters, folks, are razor sharp. You do not wanna fall down in the oysters. You, they'll cut you up and they'll cause a nasty infection. I'll show you guys how to cull out some oysters here. Gloves are essential. I want this oyster right here, but it's in a cluster of a bunch of other oysters and old dead oysters. So how you get that into something that you eat, take your culling iron and there's the faces of all the shells. Start tapping, not, not super hard, um, but not light either. It's, you kind of get a feel for it. You just start tapping around there and working off. Oh, I just hit my thumb. Working off the oysters that you don't want to get down to the oyster that you do want. And if there's a couple little ones on there, it's okay. But that right there is what you do. That's how to cull an oyster. Now, if you were doing an oyster roast, you could leave them a little bit more in clumps just because you're going to put them on there and kind of steam them and pop them. But I think Crystal wants to charbroil these ones. Not quite half a bucket. That'll do us for tonight. I am going to put a little water on top of them, but at this point, there's no need to ice them. Those oysters are fine. They survive every low tide being out of the water. And I just put some water on top of them. And uh, when I get home, I'm going to show you guys how to clean them up. It is important to note that you cannot just go get oysters wherever you want. There are specific shellfish harvesting areas in the state of Florida. Um, that's controlled by the Department of Agriculture and Commerce. They have a great website. You can go on, you can click on it, you can check if the area that you want to go get oysters, whether it's opened or closed. Uh, they also have an interactive map that shows you where the harvest areas are. Now, the reason you want to go to these harvest areas is because they test the water. They monitor the water quality in those areas. They make sure that it's healthy and 
that it's safe to eat oysters from that area. A lot of what will close an area down is too much rainfall because you're getting all the water from all the houses and neighborhoods and and the mainland drains down into these estuaries and oysters are filter feeders so they will build up any kind of toxin or anything so it is important that one you check that your shellfish harvest area is open and two that you are actually in a shellfish harvest area well mike d now i i originally i originally thought i was going to show him how to do this but he showed up with all his own gear. He knows what he's doing. He's done it down in his part of the world for a long time. But he's got a quarter of a basket there. Oh, yeah. That's more than I got. But <laughs> like I said, I'm, I think we're just going to do some for dinner tonight. And next week, I'm going to be out of town. So I'm not going to get a, a full bushel. <laughs> that hurts, y'all. There's there's no way to be uh, to look good while oystering. Yeah. Um, wear a shirt that you don't mind getting dirty in, because it's gonna get mucky and muddy and filthy. Ah! That's the worst part about it is walking. If you were to fall down in these oysters, it'd be like falling down on a cheese grater that's covered in bacteria that will get you infected. So be very careful. Take your time. All these little birds out here out having a low tide snack you can see those i think it's the ibis up there feeding everything feeds on the low tide these oyster reefs are basically a ecosystem all in their own things live off them things grow in them uh fish lay their eggs it's it's all around very important Ooh. just idling off the flat here it didn't take nothing to get these close to the boat ramp i'm gonna show you guys how we clean these oysters up now i want to point out if I wasn't gonna eat these oysters tonight, I would leave the mud and stuff on them. I'd actually ice them that way. They will stay alive much longer that way. But since I'm gonna eat them tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and clean them. What I do, I just dump them out right on my concrete, as you can see. Nothing real high tech here. And squirt them off, just like that. And then, usually I'm doing like two bushels. But, you know, once I squirt that side off, I'll just take it and turn them over with the shovel and keep hosing them off till they're clean like I want them. You know, when we first started out, those things, it didn't look quite like an oyster. It was all muddy and stuff and clean them off. They start looking real pretty. We'll ice these down, eat them for dinner tonight. We are doing a little bit of serve and turf this evening. We have these salt run oysters that you saw me and Mike get this morning. And I got a little bit of back strap that I seasoned up and I'm gonna grill, it's just salt, pepper, and a garlic blend on there. Got a hot uh, barbecue grill going. And we're gonna charbroil these. So I'm gonna show you guys how I shuck an oyster. You wanna have a rag, gotta have a rag, you will cut your hand. I like a, a good solid oyster shucker. This one's by Toadfish. Um, I like the one that has a little bit of a bended tip on it. You can get a nice solid handle on that thing so it won't slip off and cut you. You come in here, hold your, hold your oyster firm, come in at the base right there. You're gonna push and twist at the same time. It just popped and just come loose, right? I'll wipe off. The tip of that then I'll come in here like this and come in over the top of that shell so I'm cutting that shell off right there that part it goes back in the bucket and then I will come in and I don't you don't have to but I'll just remove any little bit of shell there and uh, release the oyster from that other side of the shell. Now our our oysters here are not 
very big, but I can promise you those are salty and they were in the water this morning. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get about a dozen of these or so shucked up and then we're gonna toss them on the grill. Now that all the hard work is done, Crystal is gonna show you how to make charbroiled oysters. Okay, so first you put some butter on them. Uh -huh. Exactly then, how much butter is that? A uh, cube ish. I'm and just then pretending a little to be bacon. You. Exactly how much bacon is that? As much as your heart desires. How long do you have to leave that in the oven? The bacon? Yeah. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> she burned okay. the bacon. Now we put a little roasted garlic from the oven. Oops. Mm -hmm. I like garlic, About so... 15 minutes convection, 400 in aluminum foil with some olive oil, and it's just soft enough where you can smash it up like that. So you do that, okay? Yeah. A little Parmesan cheese. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably like, with all of that stuff, how do you even taste the oyster? Well, you just do. If it was good without the oyster, we would just put that stuff on oyster shells and eat it. We also have Everglades and K-Fred, but I'm going to go with K-Fred for right now. K-Fred, or we do 50-50. Or we can do 50-50, but I like K-Fred. I like K-Fred, like too. I got the um, Everglades on my deer. That's what I like. And we're running out of light. We're going to get them on the grill. Ooh, that grill is hot, hot. Singing my arm hair. <laughs> you got a lot of it, too. <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you say? You said it's singeing your arm hair. I said you have a lot of it too. <laughs> About the same amount as you. So, we've got those. My mouth is watering. Oh, mine is too. I try, you know, like when you open the oyster, they got a little bit of uh, juice in there, liquor, so to speak. I try not to pour that out. I want that in there to help it all Keep cook, it. you know? Wow, that's hot. Ooh, it's going to be good. Ooh. How long? Um, till they're done. See how they're all bubbling right there, guys? That is how you know they're done. So all these ones that are bubbling in their own juices here, those are coming off. They're pretty much all done. Let me shine the flashlight. Look at that. That's a juicy one right there. Is it? Juicy. And those are gonna have to sit a minute Oh yeah. Because they will be too hot <laughs> for consumption Ooh, fire. right off the rip. Look at that. <laughs> We're gonna pull these That's out. Gonna be good. They're gonna be nice, probably <clears throat> mid-rare to and rare. Those. Those I'm just gonna put on and do like a traditional roast. I'll just put them on their shell and all, and when they just start to pop is when we pull them off and eat them. I don't want to toot my own horn, but charbroiled oysters, venison backstrap, some grilled sweet peppers, Crystal's uh, potatoes au gratin. Scalloped potatoes, that oh, is so close. I, but no, we messed it up. Everyone doesn't know we have the lighting. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, Scalloped potatoes. <laughs> the beautiful charbroiled oysters. That rare venison back strap, some grilled peppers. You ready? Yes. Okay. I am so hungry. Oh. Um, I am so hungry. <laughs> I want to try one of these, but first, make a little plate. If you were wondering, that's the proper way. That's the proper doneness for a venison back strap. Cook it more than that. Just ruined it. I can't get it off my fork. Help. I, I'm doing my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have helped me just, first. There, thank you. She's seen me going in. She's trying to just <laughs> oh, get in there. Better pieces. All right. And I want some of these nice. little. These are those little sweet peppers they sell in the bags. Bell mm -hmm. peppers. We just grilled them. They're so good. But the star of the show, mm -hmm. charbroiled oysters. Okay, I want this one. This one's super juicy. Cheers. I'm not gonna put them on my plate because I don't want all that stuff on my plate. But let's tr give this thing a try. Um, were you trying to trick me? What? This one has a crab in it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to get me to eat a crab. Do you guys eat the crabs and oysters? No. Anyways. Mm. 
these little crabs actually live in the oysters. Mm, they're called white so crabs. That's amazing. That's delicious. I want you guys, hopefully, you can take this video. And if you're in Florida, I don't know about other states, um, just because I don't know their regulations. This is, you can go do it in other states, but the websites that I provided are for Florida. Mm -hmm. um, look up the shellfish harvesting areas near you. Check to see whether they're open or not. Get the gear I told you. You need a good pair of boots, something to cull them out with, a uh, good pair of gloves, and a little John boat or something like that. And watch your tides. Go at a low tide and go out and get you some. Um, that was so good. Yeah. Let's try this back strap though. I'm telling you. Oysters are my favorite. Uh, I mm. love oysters so much. I love oysters so much. I made the chandelier. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if they can see it. Don't turn Take it a moment. Look at the beautiful chandelier I made. Yeah. I also want to tell you guys that Toadfish is having a celebration hmm. event. This is going to be in Charleston, South Carolina. So this particular event is going to be on December 8th. That's a Sunday, Charleston, South Carolina. I believe the tickets are $100. They're having them at a restaurant. It's going to be fully catered. There's going to be a, a couple of the oyster farms represented there, I believe. And 100% of the money goes back to um, Coastal Restoration. And we're gonna be there. So if you wanna come hang out with us, go buy a ticket. All the information will be in the description. Do one more of these for the sign off. You know? Okay, me too. Here we go. I want this one. No, I want this one. Mmm. So good. It's like a flavor explosion. It is so good. You know, Somebody said that I chew with my mouth open and they don't oh. want to watch me anymore, which is good. But a lot of times I'm also talking to you guys and telling you food reviews. So it is what it is, guys. So that's going to be the end of this one. I want to thank all of you who leave positive comments and are supportive of the channel and understand that we're just real humans and we make mistakes too. But... I'm going to leave you on this bite of backstrap. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully we see you in Charleston on the 8th for the celebration. Celebrate good times. Come on. Do you think they're going to play that song there? I don't know. But like change the lyrics to say celebrate instead of celebrate? I'm going to be disappointed if they don't. Are you picking the garlic off? There's a little too much on that well, one. Well, give it to me. I'll eat it. It's so good for you. You've been sick. You need to eat it. Sick of your shit. I love you, babe. I love you, too.